Vincent Warren is executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights, which has defended detainees at Guantanamo and helped coordinate hundreds of lawyers providing pro bono legal work there. Well, I think the big problem <clears throat> here, of course, is that if you look at the indefinite detention pieces, particularly those um, with respect to can you detain U.S. citizens on U.S. soil, the potential for that, um, the Bush and the Obama administrations have taken the position that that is an author that is authorized under previous congressional authority but that's never been settled in the court so i disagree i actually don't think that this is status quo i think that what it does the codification really is about the calcification of an indefinite detention policy it's put indefinite detention on the table um, Congress is setting the parameters for what that looks like and that's something that's new will you go to that kind of paradigm or do you think this this the way we started this which is looking at it through where to, how to uh, detain and how to try uh, no, the, the suspects is the way to look at it. We have in this country confused the war paradigm and the law enforcement paradigm, and the NDA is the is the is the precise example of that. You know, and my colleague is right that the Supreme Court has talked about. You mean it's that. codifying the the war Quarter, the war approach? It's it's, co it's codifying as the one approach. It's right. codifying the conflation of it, in my mm -hmm. view, because the Supreme Court has spoken to that the case, the issue in Hamdi. But in the Padilla case, where you had someone that was captured in the United States, and the Bush administration tried to push him into military dis, uh, custody, before the Supreme Court could rule on it, the Bush administration moved him out because, frankly, because I thought that they thought that they were going to lose. So, in fact, the broader discussion really here is about to what extent um, should law enforcement actions and crimes be treated as crimes in the U.S., and to what extent should crimes of war and violations of the war uh, of, of law of war be treated as military let's be, situations. Let's military. be honest. I would, support, I would support military courts for people who have violated the law of war. But what I don't support is a conflation of criminal activity and military activity by calling uh, the U.S. a battlefield and then anybody that's captured on the battlefield of the United States has the option of going to do you think, Do you think that's that's that the, pre the president signed off on this with reservations? Do you think he just should not have signed off uh, on the bill altogether? I, I think that the president, when the president signed off on the uh, last NDAA, he signed off with reservations. Of course, one of his reservations was is that he would veto a future bill, which of course he didn't do this time. I don't think that that reservations is... Uh, and and what, of, what of Guantanamo? The, the uh, that's not the, the question that really should be asked is, when have we ever seen a war that has no location, no geographical limit, and no time limit? That's the situation that we're in now. Right, we, that's why Guantanamo has to close. We do have to leave it there. Vincent Warren, David Rifkin, thank you both very much. Good to be thank with you. you.